Welcome back to Hoffman Tactical. In today's video, I'm going to be introducing you to my new AR9 lower. And it's not just the AR9 we're talking about today, it's really my entirely new lower. And we'll have to get into another video of my new AR15 lower before we get into all the juicy details on that. But in today's video, I wanna introduce you to it and talk about the AR9 um, aspects of it a little bit as well. I've been working on completely redesigning my AR-15 lower. And the AR-15 lower and the AR-9 lowers actually share most of their features. The entire back end is the same. It's really just the front end of the lower where your magazine and uh, all that stuff sits that changes on an AR-9. Just like the magwell area and you add an ejector and some other features like that. As well as a last round bolt hold open which we're gonna get to in a second. The AR-15 and AR-9 lowers I've been working on pretty much together and they're now getting really close to being finished. I still have some more details to work out. They are not released yet but they will be coming out in the next couple months hopefully um, and they should be pretty cool. So before we jump into the details of the AR9, I want to talk about some of the things that are new on the new lower in general. So this is what I call the version 4.x lower. That's because on my AR15, it's now the version 4.5 um, lower. And the reason I call it X is because I started with the version uh, 4.0, which was a complete redesign of my previous version 3.1, I think it was, a lower receiver. It's a complete redesign from scratch. Uh, all the new features, everything surfaced. It's completely um, rethinking the whole thing basically. And I'm now up to version 4.5 and we're pretty close to being finished. This particular AR9 is version 2.5 of my AR9 lower, but it's actually based off of the version 4.x um, AR15 lower. So they're kind of being developed together. It's just the AR9 started off with a lower number uh, just because we're borrowing a lot of information from the AR15. So on the lower, a few big highlights is number one, obviously the complete redesign. The, uh, the ergonomics are much improved. And along with that comes the, one of the biggest features, which is an integrated grip we've added to it. Um, the lower end with your trigger guard down here, all of this has been greatly improved. Uh, the ergonomics wise, it's now much more comfortable. Uh, everything's easier to access. So that's all been, that's all been redone. I re, uh, the entire support rib was redone, so it should fit uh, some more uppers, hopefully without uh, interference. Uh, really pretty much any AR-15 upper receiver, that's not something weird or uh, like a bufferless system, it should work just fine. Any standard AR-15 or AR-9 should work just fine. The front takedown pin plate area is another big change. The entire area has been redesigned so that I can now use metal plates, which can be made for relatively low cost, or plastic plates, and I've done that by just redesigning kind of a sandwich setup so that the plates are just a simple two-dimensional uh, part with just a little pocket in it. So you can almost laser cut them, not quite, but it really brings the cost down compared to trying to machine something with uh, hexagonal pockets on it or pockets for the screws and such like we had to do before. This has also resulted in a much crispier front takedown pin action because of some things I did up front, basically taking the D10 pin and changing it at a 45 degree angle. So that was all redesigned. Another really big change, I'm trying to hit the big ones here, is the buffer band. So I'm still gonna have an option to use a hose clamp on the basic lower um, so that anybody can build it without having to use any specialty components or specialty tools, because accessibility is super important. However, I wanted something that was a little more streamlined and I wanted to use a thinner buffer towers that you could use rifle buffer tubes or folding buffer tube adapters, uh, anything like that. I wanted to make the buffer tower basically like a mil spec buffer tower in its thickness. My previous lowers have all had a 150 thousandths added to the thickness of the buffer tower to accommodate the half inch wide hose clamp. A standard mil spec buffer tower is a half inch wide. So here I've used a completely diff redesigned uh, buffer band. It's completely streamlined. There is no uh, screws external or anything. It's actually totally streamlined. It uses basically a spring steel band, laser cut. Uh, I've done some, uh, some swaging. I don't know what the right term is, but I've done some uh, metal work to it to make some radius holes uh, in it. And then there's a hole that, a screw that pulls the each end of the band into a pocket in the buffer tower, tightens down, and it results in a super strong band that is uh, completely streamlined and works really well. I'm still working out details on that because it's kind of tricky to install, kind of tricky to manufacture. So there's some trade-offs there for sure, but that's kind of a big deal as well. No more hose clamp. Any other big changes? Those are really the big highlights right there. Um, minor changes we've made. I've like redone things like redesigning the uh, bolt hold open area. So there's now uh, no more external big slots going back into your support rib. I've moved that internally. So this, uh, looking at the, um, bolt hold open area here, you would think that there's no way to get the internal pin back out, but there actually is. There's a passage on the inside. The rear takedown pin, I used to use the tip of a cartridge to pry the pin out 
Don't do that anymore. I now have a little scalloped area where you can use the rim of the cartridge to pry it out. Works a whole lot better and um, works with nine millimeter as well, which is important for a nine millimeter lower where you don't have a pointy bullet on your cartridge. So that kind of hits the highlights on the new lower receiver. There's a lot of stuff I changed and updated. However, I don't want to go into all of it today. I want to uh, talk about the AR9 next. Uh, my previous Air 9, which was I think the version 1.2, uh, was worked pretty good actually. It was based on my older lower receiver design. Obviously, this is the new lower. Uh, but this Air 9 here has a few uh, pretty major changes, which I think are pretty cool. So first of all, I have redesigned the ejector a bit to be a bit more sturdy. The old one we actually never had any issues with, but this one here should be a bit more sturdy. Uh, I have redesigned the magazine catch so that it's a bit easier to print and works a, a bit a bit better. The old one was a little too thin. We had issues with it bending or creeping over time. This one here is a lot sturdier and I really optimized it. So that's a pretty big improvement in my opinion. And then another thing I added was a uh, over insertation stop. So on the previous lower, I basically relied on the magazine catch to prevent you from over inserting the magazine. And I got a lot of feedback from people that they had issues with over insertation because the Glock magazines don't really have a very positive tab on them, uh, which your magazine catch engages with. So that can be an issue. So I went ahead and actually added just a little boss to the side here, which has worked really well, actually. I'm still doing experiments to see how long it's going to last ramming magazines against it with just a PLA lower. It might wear out eventually, but so far it's been really good. Um, so you can now no longer over insert your magazines. It, it works quite well. The biggest um, change, of course, we're going to get to in a second, it's the last round bolt hold open, and that, that's quite exciting. One more change I made, and this is more of an aesthetic thing, and this ties into my new lower designs, and this is, I can, I can now do this because of my new front plate design. I have actually angled the front end of the lower so that the front of the lower now follows the Glock magazine. Kind of a minor detail, but uh, it removes a little bit of material, and it just looks a lot better. It looks like a proper AR9 lower now, and not some weird Frankenstein, like AR15 with a magwell insert or something. Okay, and then last but not least is the most exciting part of the new AR9, which is the last round bolt hold open. So if you don't know, on most AR9s that don't have this feature, uh, when you run out of ammunition, it's just like an MP5. You just get that horrible click and um, you pull the trigger and there is nothing in your chamber. It ejects around and then it just the bolt closes on an empty magazine um, and you really have no indicator that you're out of ammunition until you get that click and um, yeah, and that's not fun. So the last row bolt hold open resolves that. And we've actually been testing it today and it's worked really quite phenomenally well. So the way I did this is um, I had to figure out how to do it with relatively easy to easy to print parts and easy to get materials. So a problem with a lot of last round bolt hold open designs is they rely on bent up wire, which is a bit of a pain to do. There are some cool designs. I think Printer 2A actually is a cool design using uh, bent up sheet metal, which I will, I think, be evaluating kind of seeing how that works as well. I've taken a little bit different approach. I am using uh, mostly printed parts with one metal component. That metal component is a 1 8 inch hex shaft. So that may sound like a specialty component. I've actually bought extruded aluminum shafting uh, for that purpose. However, 1 8 inch hex uh, Allen keys are really easy to come by. You can just uh, Dremel off one of those or hacksaw one of those off, use a file, whatever, and that works just fine. So it's a really easy component to get actually 8 inch Allen keys are really, really easy to get. So the basic mechanism uh, relies on three, com three printed components and one hex shaft. And it's simply when the uh, little slider up front is lifted, it rotates a lever up front, rotates the shaft, which runs all the way down the right hand side of the magazine well, and then it lifts a little bit of lever, which is uh, the little levers underneath your existing bolt hold open lever on which is on an AR-15, same here in the AR-9, and it simply lifts that lever up. When the forward lever is lifted, motion is transmitted through that shaft and the lever in the rear lifts up and presses up on the bottom of the last round bolt hold open. This took a while to get running successfully. It's difficult to do with printed parts because of uh, friction and backlash, but really once I got it worked out, it's really worked phenomenally well in this video and uh, every single time we've run out of ammunition, it has always held open. And of course, this does use Glock magazines, and uh, hence why we have to use this last round bolt hold open system to move the motion from the follower on the front of the magazine all the way around to the back where we need it on a AR style platform. If there's enough interest in a different type of magazine, I would be glad to look into doing that. Right now, things like the uh, CZ Scorpion magazine are out of all, out of the question because on a AR lower, uh, they won't fit up into the AR upper. That's something I might do on an Orca 9mm, it would probably be cool. However, I've seen some like the Colt submachine gun mags. People have been interested in doing those. I think they're the single stack ones. Um, so those actually probably work just fine. Let me know what you'd like to see down below magazine wise. But for the time being, we are using Glock magazines because uh, yeah, because that's what you use on AR9s because it's like 
the right thing to do, right? This here is the brace, and I've really uh, made it a lot larger and a lot thinner so that you can brace it against your forearm. It actually works quite well. Now, as far as availability goes, um, this lower is not out yet. As I mentioned earlier, it'll probably be a couple more months because I still have more details to work out. I still have to do things like design the built-in support, which is a time-consuming process. And I have to do more testing, get all the packages together, um, all the files together, make sure everything is good to go. So right now, we're still kind of in the prototype. Uh, well, we're beyond the prototype stage. Right now, we're in the testing stage and some of the really fine details. But stay tuned. When this is out, I will be doing more videos on it to let you guys know. And if you're not on my email list over at my website, Google or your favorite search engine is your friend look for the channel name you'll be able to find my website and um, go ahead and subscribe to the email list there because i do send out emails and you'll be the first one to know when these files actually drop so go ahead and do that that's really about it for today's video i think i've covered all the details i wanted to cover um, just stay tuned and uh, i will talk to you guys again next time thank you so much for watching